Peter Zelmaya recently wrote about the mystery surrounding Boris Nemtsov's death for Al Jazeera.com. He's also the director of the Eurasia Democracy Initiative, a group that focuses on strengthening ties between post-Soviet countries and the West. And you're Ukrainian, right? Yes. All right, so g give me your sense. Y do you think that Boris Yeltsin is behind this? Uh, you mean Boris, Boris Yeltsin? I mean, I'm sorry, Boris Yeltsin. <laughs> Sli slip. Uh, Vladimir Putin. <laughs> well, I think that... Uh the climate uh, of uh, witch hunts that we've been, you know, uh, we've obs observed over the past several years, and especially since uh, Russia's annexation of Crimea, I think is ultimately responsible for this murder. Whether we are ever able to link it directly to Mr. Putin or anyone uh, in his chain of command is uh, far from certain, and it's probably irrelevant because I think ultimately it is this atmosphere of hysteria uh, where, you know, Mr. Nemtsov's effigies were burned at these. Nazi style rallies in Moscow, in central Moscow, where his images trampled on in public laboratories. That is what Mr. Putin is responsible for this sort of climate where terror was okay. Right, there's, there's widespread speculation about this. Nobody knows exactly what happened except the people who are involved in this crime. Uh, there are some who suggest. Uh, Vladimir Putin, not Boris Yeltsin, Vladimir Putin is behind this, but there was a Yeltsin connection because he worked for Yeltsin, exactly, right? Exactly, yes. Um, uh, Ukrainian, some are suggesting Ukrainians are behind this, is that right? There are many different uh, theories that are being you know, presented to the public or fed to the public. Mr. Putin went on air uh, shortly after the murders and offered the so-called official the central line, and that is that it was an attempt to discredit him, his government, to sow chaos in Russia. And then there were, you know, the state-owned uh, channels went into basically overdrive trying to present and concoct other theories. Has including it created chaos in Russia? Really? Uh, not, not so far. It has created uh, uh, much anxiety and primarily among the opposition folks who believe that this portends a whole new era of crackdown and repressions in Russia. There have been other suggestions. I mean, there have been wild speculation. Talked about ISIL being involved, a Muslim uh, Islamic group being involved in this. But, but um, I just go back to... To, to or a love triangle, mm -hmm. true, right? That, that's right. the other thing is that that this young woman was involved, may have been involved in someone else who was mad about it. a disgruntled lover of right. hers who actually, you know, finally caught up to the man. All right. So the, uh, aside from this speculation, uh, we don't know what happened. But what does the what does this crime mean? For Russia right now, and how important is it to, to what's going on the the politics of the country? Well, I think that you know the other version and the, the one that is offered by most, uh, I think, the, uh, of the opposition folks and folks that read and know Russian history is actually um, the 1934. Uh, murder of one of Stalin's uh, henchmen, one of Stalin's uh, popular communist officials, uh, Sergei Kirov, who was murdered, uh, as many historians believe, under Stalin's direct orders. That allowed him to unleash a new wave of repressions. And this is something that we're witnessing, or may be witnessing in the weeks and months to come, that this murder precisely, as you mentioned, you know, uh, using the, you know, the, the various wild versions, the Ukrainian nationalists or the, the Muslim terrorists, the opposition themselves to create a martyr figure, that will be used in order to, uh, to finally you know, vanquish the, the fledgling opposition and institute a new uh, era, a brave new Russia where uh, this terror will be the, you know, the uh, sort of uh, the new normal. We'll have to see what happens with this. Peter Zelmaya, thank you very much.